Twilight stood from her seat on the train and stretched out on her back. She looked out of the window at the sun uh, and frowned. Still another day until they would be home. She figured she would be rather bored with such a long, relatively quick ride, what with her mentor laying on the cushy bench across from her, having barely said a word the entire ride home so far. She was likely thinking on her subjects, hoping that even if for a night, Pinky would show an ounce of mercy. However, the unicorn's stomach was turning inside her. She felt like she could throw up at a moment's notice. Despite last night being the first time she had dealt with Pinkie Pie face to face, the previous few days hadn't been kind to her either, physically or emotionally. Every time she blinked, she was afraid she'd be closing her eyes for the last time. When the evenings came and fatigue started to take her, she worried that she'd open her eyes and see her friend standing in front of her, ready to finish her off. It seemed the fear had decided to creep into the waking hours as well. As she headed to the door to her cabin, a tired voice spoke up. Heading out for a bit? Twilight turned to face the princess. Even though she knew the millennia-old Olicorn could forgo sleep for as long as she wanted, the bags under her eyes could have easily told a different story. No doubt if Celestia wasn't riddled with stress too, that she would look like a look at bright and warm at the body she normally guided across the heavens. Yeah. I need to move around a little, stretch my legs, maybe head down to the dining car and get something in me. Something light. I don't know if it's hunger or nerves, or maybe a bit of both. Got to stop thinking about, well, all this. Easier said than done, hmm? Celestia retorted. No kidding. You want anything? Probably going to eat over there. Maybe if some pony's there, I can just shoot the breeze with them for a little while. I can calm down some. With a gentle smile, the princess answered. If you want to bring back a large cup of coffee, I wouldn't say no. Cream? Sugar? Two of each, please. Sounds good. I'll be back in a bit. As Twilight stepped out and closed the door behind her, Celestia stretched herself out, feeling a couple cracks up her spine. It'd been a while since she was conscious for so long, but she had to remain aware for her students' sake. If she failed to get rid of Pinky, who knows how far the Pink Freak would go. Various ideas ran through her mind as her eyes got heavy. Would Pinky continue to hunt down ponies as they slept? How would she be able to control that? If something horrible happened to Twilight in spite of her efforts, would that be the end of all this? How would she handle losing Twilight? Why was this train's bench so comfortable? She rubbed her eyes and sighed heavily. Celestia looked at the large stack of paperwork sitting in front of her as she adjusted herself in her throne. Another day, another series of boring royal duties. She called over the quill presented by her brown-maned unicorn assistant, but for whatever reason, her magic failed her. Odd. Perhaps she'd just been working too hard lately and couldn't focus like she normally could. The princess groaned loudly, annoyed that usual simple task had grown momentarily more difficult. She hadn't gone without the use of her magic since she was a tiny filly, and goodness knows how long ago that was. The assistant magically lifted the pen of the pile of orders, taxes, and ordinances up to Celestia as she took the quill between her teeth and got to work. One sheet after another, after another, after another, met the princess's royal signature. Most of the text she didn't even bother to read. She didn't want to be there, and for some reason, felt that she wasn't actually supposed to be. Was this a weekend or a holiday? She couldn't remember. She also couldn't seem to remember how long she'd been sitting there, signing her life away before she was near the end of the stack. It felt like a few minutes had been a few hours at all once. Whatever the case was, she was finally finishing up. As she signed the last sheet of paper, the patient assistant began to walk around with a pile of documents and quill in tow, only to pause suddenly as she looked over the first few pages. No, no, no. This will never do. The young brunette growled. What is it now? Celestia snapped. Setting the papers down, the unicorn turned around, grinning maniacally at the princess. 
You're still alive! Quickly snatching the feather between her teeth, she swung her head and launched it at the shocked Olicorn. In a flash, Lestia yanked to the side, the quill narrowly missing her neck and piercing through her ever-flowing mane. As her ethereal hair repaired itself, the princess looked behind her, seeing the makeshift weapon jammed deep into the back of the throne. Oh, come on! You weren't supposed to move! Don't you know how the game works? For as long as you've been around, you ought to know you've played it. Realizing whose voice it was, Celestia gasped and took to the sky, angrily facing her pink attacker. You! How dare you come here! Leave at once! No. No, I don't think I will. Even though I was so hoping for this to be over and done with right here, I suppose this gives us the unique opportunity, Pinky said, rubbing her chin curiously. What are you talking about? What opportunity? Why, to talk to you, of course. Unconvinced, Lestia narrowed her eyes. I know, I know. Totally out of character for me, Pinky joked. But I'm completely serious. We have nothing to discuss. You've been murdering my little ponies. And for what? Because an accident happened? Celestia snarled. That's just it, though. I could have easily been gone if I'd just gotten what I wanted from the beginning. But then you came into the picture and... Well, let's just say that I had to redirect my frustrations for a little while. What you wanted? Sneering, Pinky replied. I think you know what I'm talking about. The furious pair stared down each other, neither side about to budge. After a tense moment, the princess spoke up. I'll never give you Twilight. Oh, really? Then why did I find her last time and sense her presence the time before that? If I didn't know any better, I'd say you were considering it. We were testing something, if you must know. I was more than prepared to get her away from you if necessary. Celestia fired back. The murderous mare shrugged. If you say so, I have to admit I'm rather disappointed in you. I'd have figured you want to keep your little subject safe, and let's face it, getting her to me would be the best thing for every pony. What makes you think I'd ever do such a thing? Because if my last real target were to join me in such a wonderful afterlife, then you'd never have to see me again, Pinky answered, smiling wildly and strangely enough, sincerely. Celestia paused, subtly lifting a curious eyebrow as she floated high over the Earth Pony's head. Knowing that Pinkie Pie loved her little games when she was alive, she was reasonably suspect of the killer's intent. See? You're thinking about it, aren't you? Be reasonable, princess. No pony would ever be hurt again if you'd go about my mercy, and I'd go on about my merry way. What's one life weighed against the rest of your precious kingdom, hmm? Perhaps it was because she had practically raised Twilight like a daughter for so many years, teaching and guiding her. It was something that she knew Pinky couldn't understand, what with her never having any children of her own. If she did, maybe Celestia's response would have made more sense to her. I know how precious each and every life of my subjects is, including Twilight's, including yours. I do wish that things would have turned out differently. But under no circumstances will I sacrifice Twilight to you. How would I even know you'd keep your word? You don't, the pink pony giggled. But any chance is better than none at all, isn't it? You've already given me no reason to believe you. If Twilight was all you wanted, you would have never done what you did in Appaloosa, or to... The princess hesitated, not wanting to accidentally reveal something that could ruin their plans. Though Pinky wasn't as wise in the ways of magic as she and Twilight were, there was no reason to give her, the deceased maniac, a reason to suspect something. Or to what? Celestia remained silent. Ah, you probably saw it in the papers or something. What can I say? I needed something to do while I waited for you to slip up. But if that's your final answer, then I suggest you don't blink. You don't want to miss the fun! What are you talking about now? Without responding, Pinky snatched up the stack of papers at her hooves and took aim. One after another, she rapidly launched the suddenly razor-sharp sheets at the high-flying olicorn. 
Celestia expertly jerked, dodged, and spun out of the way of the deadly projectiles, making carefully sure not for her wings to get clipped. But eventually, the sheer number of blades overwhelmed her, slicing across her side, then a leg, then the side of her neck, narrowly missing a jugular. Each cut made her growl in pain as she tried violently to endure the unending assault. Finally, one caught her right wing, just enough, and she slowly began to fall, fighting against gravity and her injuries. Seeing the opportunity as the princess descended, Pinky dropped the sheets and launched herself into the air. However, Celestia saw it coming. Mustering what strength she could, she spun and swatted her enemy with her good wing, sending her careening through the stained glass window. The menace screamed as she was thrown from the room, her voice trailing off as she plummeted away. Sighing heavily in relief, the alicorn landed softly and stretched her wing, assessing the extent of the damage. She should be fine, but it still stung nevertheless. Hey! A voice echoed in the long hall. Celestia gasped, quickly taking a defensive position and scanning the room. There was no way. Was there? You blinked! When Celestia's back was turned, Pinky let go of the chandelier high overhead, and landed squarely on the princess's back, slamming her hard to the floor. She tried to stand, but a pink hoof dragged aggressively across the wound of her neck and brought her to her knees. A pair of limbs suddenly wrapped themselves tight around the princess's throat. Pinky used Celestia's struggling against her and yanked her to the floor, landing her huge frame into her bad wing. She howled in agony as the sharp pain doubled. In that instant, Pinky reached with both hooves and grabbed onto her jaw, intent on tearing her mouth and face apart. Come on, princess. You always had such words of wisdom for us. Let's see if we can't get one last thing out of you. Pinky mocked. Though the pink mare was an earth pony, Celestia had plenty of physical strength of her own and stood her ground in spite of the stinging, biting pain of her injuries. But the princess was trapped. If she tried to get up or take to the air again, that little redirection of energy could leave her vulnerable, and Pinky certainly what isn't going to tie her out. As the slumbering princess fought off the attacker, Twilight, with a steaming hot cup of joe in her magical grasp, approached the door to their cabin and slid it open. She gasped as the cup fell, shattering the floor. Princess Celestia! The unicorn popped up beside her mentor, panic setting in where she noticed the bloody slices across her body and the way she was convulsing. Twilight hadn't been shown the spell her teacher had used to keep an eye on her when she slept. She knew she shouldn't should have asked her, but she should have just been so preoccupied with everything she hadn't had the chance. Twilight violently shoved Celestia, screaming and begging for her to wake up, but no avail. Come on, think. Pike was able to wake her the first time with some fire, but she didn't have anything like that around. Only well, she didn't drop the coffee. She could have doused her with it a little. She darted her eyes around the room, looking for something with which she might jolt the princess awake with. Uh, nothing. Frustrated, she started hitting herself in the head, thinking of an idea. It wasn't until her hoof grazed her horn that she had a crazy idea. Biting her lip, Twilight magically corralled her mentor's uh, high legs together, holding them in place as tightly as she could. With the way she was thrashing and shaking, a stray limb could result in a concussion or worse. She carefully dragged Celestia's flank closer to the edge of the seat, doing her best to make sure that she wasn't hurting her or aggravating her injuries. Once everything was set, Twilight planted her hooves and lunged her head forward, stabbing Celestia's hamstring. The princess screamed, the hard jab enough to bring her back to the waking world. Celestia jumped in fright as her student wrapped her forelegs around her neck, hugging her so tightly she almost had trouble talk taking in a breath. Thank goodness, Twilight sobbed. I I saw you were sleeping and shaking and I thought I thought you A long white leg curled around the small unicorn, holding her close and smiling proudly. It's okay. It's okay. You saved my life. Thank you, Twilight. Thank you so much. It was Pinky, wasn't it? I'm afraid so. She tried to convince me to hoof you over. That she'd stop killing if I did. When I refused, she attacked me. Celestia looked at her open wounds. As I'm sure you can guess. 
The two looked over the multiple bleeding slashes, with only Twilight feeling the need to cringe. Celestia's horn lit up, her magic enveloping the cuts. Little by little, they started to seal, the healing process stinging like iodine. After a moment, the last of the cuts closed and the pain subsided. Though she was relieved that her teacher was safe, the unicorn looked glum nonetheless. As she turned away, trying to hide her eyes, Celestia asked, What's the matter? Just starting to wonder again if I should just... You know, I mean, she told you... I have no reason to believe her after everything that's transpired. Besides, I already told you before that I'm not going to just give her to you like a sacrificial lamb. If the two of us had intended for such a thing in the first place, we would have never agreed to the best course of action, was to figure a way to banish her to Tartarus permanently. Now would we? No. No, I suppose not, Twilight replied, a touch of guilt still remaining in her voice. Her attention shifted, albeit briefly, to the pieces of porcelain on the floor and the stain beneath it. Uh, sorry about your coffee. That's all right. Celestia chuckled. We can go get another. I wouldn't mind stretching my legs, too. As she moved to stand up, a hind leg cramped up, making her wince. Oh, sorry about that, too. Twilight interjected, grinning in embarrassment. I may have jabbed you in the back of the leg with my horn to wake you up. The princess shrugged. You did what you had to do. Our walk can wait a minute. You think... Maybe you can show me how to perform the spell you used on me, just in case you ever want to take a nap? Honestly, you look, well, terrible. Considering we won't be back in Ponyville until later on tomorrow, and it could help avoid any further incidents, of course I can. Celestia stretched her legs, flexing them several times until the soreness was gone. There we go. Come now, let us go and get that coffee. I'll show you the spell when we get back to our cabin.